today I'm in Northern Ohio. It's June 2023, and I'm here at Cuyahoga Falls. I'm gonna have to speak up a bit because the falls are really loud. So anyway, this is the place uh, where my mother, Martha Wolf, her maiden name was Martha Mendel, uh, was born and raised, and her father, my grandfather, Roy Mendel, uh, where I get my name from, uh, he was born in Ashburn, Ohio. And his mother was Stella Vendel, and her maiden name was Stella Jewell, and her father was Andrew Jewell, who was my great-great-grandfather, or my mother's father's mother's father. I've now traveled 50 miles from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, east to Girard, Ohio, which is in Trumbull County, and I'm at the Girard Liberty Union Cemetery where my great-great-grandfather Andrew Jewell is buried. I don't know a great deal about Andrew Jewell. He was born in Somerset County, England, and came to the United States. We don't know his birth date. Our family always said that he lied about his age when he enlisted as a soldier in the Union Army. His tombstone says that he was born in 1851. That would have made him 12 or 13 years old when he enlisted, which doesn't seem right. But he was certainly less than 18, so maybe I'm about the right age to portray him during his time in the military. We have no photograph of him, but according to his discharge papers, he was exactly my current height, 5'6", with brown hair and blue eyes. He had listed his occupation before joining the army as a shoemaker. He enlisted as a private on the 27th of April, 1864, into the 171st OVI, which was a 100-day regiment. He was in Company G. He saw action with his regiment at the Battle of Cynthiana, Kentucky. He was honorably discharged on the 20th of August, 1864. He then re-enlisted on August 30th and was made a sergeant in Company E of the 177th OVI. He saw action at the Siege of Murfreesboro, Fort Fisher, Fort Anderson, Town Creek, and the capture of Wilmington, North Carolina. He was at Bennett's house on April 26th when General Johnston surrendered his army to Sherman. After the war, Andrew worked as a barber and lived in Girard, Ohio with his wife, Mary Real Jewell. They had seven children. In addition to my great-grandmother, Stella, there were Perry, William, Daisy, Lula, Charles, and Nettie. Unfortunately, an influenza outbreak took Andrew's life at a young age, perhaps in his late thirties, in 1887. His wife, Mary, who was maybe about his same age, died three months later. It was said of a broken heart, leaving all their children orphaned. The children were separated and sent out to different relatives to be cared for. So here's my great-great-grandfather, Andrew Jewell, and his wife, Mary. Today is June 4th, 2023, and exactly 159 years ago today, Andrew boarded a train with the rest of his regiment and traveled to Kentucky, where he found himself in the midst of the Battle of Cynthiana. According to information I found on the internet, the 171st Ohio was called into Kentucky to attempt to deal with the infamous Confederate raider John Hunt Morgan and his division of Confederate cavalry. When the 171st Ohio debarked from their trains near Cynthiana, they discovered a battle raging a mile and a half to the south in the town. Within ten minutes of the fall of Cynthiana, the Confederates attacked the Ohio troops. The Ohioans initially repulsed the attacks, but the Confederates were moving in on their right flank, and the 171st was obliged to fall back to a wooded hill, fighting on their front and right flanks. Morgan also swung troops around the 171st rear, 
Finally, at 11.30 a.m., five and a half hours after fighting began, the 171st ran out of ammunition and surrendered. Though defeated, the stand of the 171st delayed John Hunt Morgan long enough for Burbage's brigade of Federal Mounted Infantry to catch up to Morgan and defeat him. Morgan was forced to parole his captives so Andrew Jewell was not a prisoner of the Confederates for very long.